Uh, welcome to another uh, Crypto Writer Roundtable. Um, we we had so much fun the first time that we did this that we actually tossed around the idea um, of doing this, uh, you know, on a monthly basis or, or pretty close to it. Um, and basically, there's a lot of people that have actually been um, bothering me and sending me messages and saying, Jimmy, like, when can we induct you into Eden? And and I kind of like I'm I'm a little bit um, I, I'm a little bit busy. Um, with all the stuff that we have going on. And I kind of said, I, I don't know, right? Like, but but I wanted to give this coverage and probably eventually I will be inducted and I'll just, you know, put my hand up and, and say, I, I declare uh, not to go forward, but I'll support who, who, whoever is in the group. But um, the, the one that convinced me actually uh, to just say, screw it, because I don't like to do things half-assed. Um, but the one who, who convinced me to do it was John um, of Boyd. And, and he basically said, uh, Jimmy, just like let us induct you and you go in. It takes 45 minutes. You can go into the first round. You can support whoever is the best in the group. Um, and, and that's the thing. Uh, you don't necessarily have to go through to the end. And he said, this is really important. He said, for the EOS community, this is really important. And that's kind of what sold, sold me on it. And I think all of you guys really believe that this is really important as well. Um, you know, Brandon, we've had you on the on the on the show before, uh, talking about Eden and, and other things. Um, but first time guests, uh, Joshua and Amy and, and Dominic, uh, welcome. And maybe you guys can uh, Brandon as well. But maybe you guys can give a, a quick introduction: who you are and, and why you believe in EOS. <laughs> or sorry, why you believe in Eden on EOS <laughs> or EOS, <laughs> what, whatever you want. I mean, <laughs> alphabetically by first name, that's me. Can you hear me? Yep. So my name is Ami. I'm from Israel and I'm uh, involved in uh, software development most of my adult life. And uh, I'm, my bread and butter is uh, uh, databases and uh, information technology projects for uh, medium-sized companies, uh, mainly in Israel, but sometimes in other countries also. And I really like the idea of EOS IO and of course EOS and Eden. There are many different parts that uh, fit together and uh, it's it's a very interesting uh, ecosystem. And I like EOS IO as uh, a replacement for uh, companies' databases actually and uh, backend uh, software. So everything is on chain, even if it's a private chain, and even if it's uh, not in the public domain, uh, you can gain many uh, benefits out of that by knowing that uh, everything is documented and you can know who did what, as opposed to a database where 99% of my work is, is in the old world and where I have full access to a database and I can manipulate data and uh, there is uh, no trace of that. And that's that's bad for the customer. And they most of the time they don't realize that. They don't know that. Yeah, and I've actually had the pleasure of, of working with you before, Emmy. So it's really good to see that you're involved mm -hmm. in, uh, in, 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 in this space and in the governance aspect as well. Um. I think it's... Uh, uh, a very important uh, part and, and something that's very unique in the blockchain uh, world. And EOS is doing it right with uh, Eden on EOS. And I think uh, having a, a dynamic group of people managing uh, EOS and not, not by the early adopters who got in luckily when the price was low and got rich, but uh, people that really care and uh, and you have like a decentralized group of people that uh, have checks and balances on themselves and uh, it's it's evolving and it's it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, I think so too. Um, Joshua, do you want to go? I, I heard you've been um, you know quite vocal recently and you've got a lot of things uh, that people are, are, are shouting about. So I, I like in a good way, I think. Um, so yeah, what's, what's up? Um, what's who, who are you and, and, and why is this important to you? Hey, yeah. Uh, thanks for giving me the, the chance to chime in on that. I can kind of relate to Chris in some ways because I've, I haven't been very vocal in the community, uh, but I've, I've been around paying attention since the beginning, uh, since I guess before the, uh, 
you know, the before the white paper was even released. And I've always had a, I've always thought EOSIO was the superior, uh, you know, stack that it really is the next generation blockchain, um, and the world can can run on this technology as as it progresses. But I've always had a soft spot for EOS itself. I really like uh, sacred geometry and the chestahedron of EOS has always kind of spoken to me like a like an like I don't know like an entity of some kind. I think there's something there's some magic to that. Um, and I really I really like the EOS community and I want to see the best uh, for it. But my so naturally I'm excited about I think it's the perfect testing ground for what's happening with Eden. But my real excitement is what I think is a trifecta of open source softwares that's coming together here, which is we already have EOS IO. We don't quite have an independent developer team for it yet, but I see that coming up pretty soon. And maybe Eden is going to make that possible. And we have Eden OS um, in the works. And eventually that will be, you know, open source. And my real excitement is all the other ways that that can be used besides how we're using it uh, longer term. And then eventually we're going to have Clarion OS. And so when I when I saw that uh, Dan resigned as CTO of Block One and then like emerged like a phoenix in the EOS community, and I and I paid it, I was paying attention to what he was working on. Uh, those I caught the vision, you know, the like some level of depth of vision and the timing of that all of this is kind of taking place right now. And and I've just just kind of caught the bug like i think i need to somehow get really involved in this because over the next few decades i really think these three technologies among other things can be leveraged um to to do do some things in the world that you know we've never really seen happen um but at the moment immediately you know i i really believe that the world can run on eos and that's that's the main thing uh that's drawn me to eat and on eos is i i want to see that actually happen um, there's other details, I guess, that, that are catching my attention and exciting me, um, about Eden itself beyond just EOS, even this first group, I think there's a lot more value to it than what people are, than what's being, uh, expressed, you know, l loudly at the moment. Um, it's in a lot of ways, it's kind of like the benefits of joining a, uh, a private society or some type of, uh, you know, club or, or fellowship. And there's so many around the world. And really, the world is mostly operated and controlled by these type of organizations uh, throughout history. So there's, there's these really incredible benefits, like a, like a mastermind type of thing, which I think you guys could appreciate, like a field of consciousness is being created. And I think you notice it when you, um, uh, when you're inducted, I think if you if anyone here who's been inducted, the feeling uh, in that moment, it's like something in your life has has changed. It's very bizarre, actually. Um, I, I, I the, the fighters are going to hate that, but I think it's it's kind of hilarious, right? Like, yeah, resign from block one and rose. I, I forget exactly how you put it, but resign from one block one and rose from the ashes as a phoenix. So I, I like that a lot. That's really well uh, really well done so um i guess the other new person first time on on the these eden os uh round tables uh is, is dominic so dominic uh who are you and, and, and why is this important to you hey yeah well dominic thomas uh, been around for a while um co-founded uh Warbly and uh that has become ux network which is still a eosio chain going strong so uh, still involved with the technology and, and trying to find uh, ways to get real world applications happening. Um, and so uh, having spent uh, a lot of time early on uh, with mainnet governance, uh, trying to get the worker proposal system uh, up and running, um, it was a frustrating time. You know, there was a lot of optimism. This is like mm, probably March uh, to give or take July, August, 2018. And, um, you know, I was frustrated. I put a lot of time and energy into that and it just kind of got nixed, <laughs> you know, in the back end, Dan waved his wand. I've already told him he was a dick for doing that. Um, but you know, we're over it. We're friends now. <laughs> um, but no, I, I got it. I mean, back then there wasn't, uh, 
I don't think there was a process in place, uh, frankly, that would have spent those resources well. Um, and so, you know, kind of hanging around doing my thing like everyone else and trying to trying to put this um, technology to work, I suddenly start, you know, seeing all this Eden stuff from Dan, read the book. I uh, was really intrigued um, by the ability of the election uh, process here, the consensus model, really human consensus model um, to, to really try to reduce corruption um, and decrease apathy, right? Which are problems with almost all systems of governance. You know, you get the loud mouse like me out there and, you know, they're like, <laughs> yeah, I'll show up for everything and oh, let's change the world, you know, but um, um, if you don't, if you don't really have your community engaged and consenting to the results and feeling really good about it, right? And the U.S. being a great example right now, you know, nobody's happy with this election, really. Um, maybe the, the people who supported, you know, the president, the current president are happy, but half aren't, right? And that's not really consensus. It's divisive, right? So um, been just working the last several months with Dan and others, to try to get this thing off the ground and see it's an experiment, right? But I think it's brought a lot of optimism back for the governance side and the community engagement side. And if this works, I think there's going to be uh, an infrastructure in place that any EOS IO chain or any group or any other blockchain community will be able to use um, because everything being built is open source and it's designed that way. So I'm just uh, part of the experiment at this point. Yeah, I'm not personally part of it, but to me, it rings of like Dax on steroids, essentially. Right? Yeah, like it's kind of it, it's got that it, like, kind of undertone, I think. So, um, but yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, Brandon, do you want to go? What 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 be in the what what be in the future of Eden on Eos in the leaves of the tea? <laughs> hey guys. Oh, Brandon Lovejoy, yeah, <clears throat> I've been just wrapped up in all this madness since the early days of DPoS, like, and uh, this Eden was the the final layer I was looking for in terms of human government governance, um, which has sorely been missing in the entire blockchain space, and really as a identity solution and a reputation solution. Um, <clears throat> that's one of the holy grails of um, of this entire space is everyone's trying to solve the identity problem and having mixed success doing that. And um, I think Eden does it. It does it uh, in a way that <clears throat> may at first seem kind of uh, like slow and laborious, but what it's building is kind of uh, like, I started thinking about it, Dan Dan started talking about how everyone in the, everyone in the community is effectively an oracle. And so you can think of Eden almost like an oracle of oracles. Um, and if that's true, then it kind of ends up becoming this sort of like trust engine that's like a reputational trust engine that can be used to power all sorts of things. Um, like once we have a known group of people that that uh, have established their integrity and uh, the trust between them, then that's a really powerful, um, that's a powerful thing. And it has implications for the whole space. There's so much you can build when you know who you're dealing with and um, there's so much you can coordinate to accomplish um, when you're not constantly fighting um, the ambiguity and anonymity of of these online spaces where all it takes to become a member is to buy a token and just waltz in and claim that you're part of the community. <clears throat> so, yeah, I think Eden's a real big deal. I think uh, it's going to change a lot of things, not the least of which might be local government, actually. And and what like Josh alluded to earlier, um, yeah, this doesn't end on the blockchain, I don't believe. So I'll leave it there. 
Yeah, I, I, we're always happy to have you here because I think you're one of the most, you know, you've been in you've been in this space for a really long time and you have a really good perspective. So I think like you're, you, you always mention about like blockchain and integrity and governance. And I think that's a really valid point that a lot of other blockchains might be missing, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, and last uh, but not least, uh, Chris Barnes, um, hey. Hello, yeah, thanks for having me on again. Awesome to be with this great cast of uh, individuals who are all pushing in the same direction. You know, Eden seems to be this great aggregator of uh, of like-minded individuals. And Eden on EOS, the aggregation is those who want EOS to improve and, and enhance the ecosystem. And I think that's been sort of missing. You see it in a lot of the chat, a lot of the Telegram chat seems to be this we're going to blame this person or that entity and this is a problem and that, but it's never, I don't see a lot of constructive moving in one direction for, for a, a unified goal. And uh, uh, Eden's amazing where people are coming together um, around an idea and, uh, and now we're going to, you know, one plus one equals three and all kind of push in the same direction, which is to uh, improve EOS. Like we're, we're all here because we want EOS to do well. Um, and there's so many side benefits that can come from that. Like, you know, what Brandon just mentioned and, you know, the out outside of just crypto here, what Eden, the process can do. But um, at a minimum, I think it's going to be really powerful for EOS just to get us all pushing in the same direction and, um, you know, get our handle on some good amount of funding and, and deploy it and deploy it in projects that uh, the Eden community thinks are worthwhile. And so, yeah, it should yield a lot of fruit, I hope. Yeah, I think the funding aspect is really important. I mean, and what I think, I mean, you, you can kind of piece together my comments after each of you have spoken to kind of get, you know, how I feel about it. But Corey, how about you? Like, what, what are your thoughts on, on Eden? I, I don't know if you ever heard those. <laughs> Muted. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the idea that this can operate as a trust engine really, really speaks to me. Um, it, like, we're going back to to uh, you know kind of first principles a little bit around what it means for hyper intelligent monkeys to collaborate, and you know the the just the the math function of if you can get ten people and and you basically have to create consensus and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again is significantly uh, uh, more effective. Like any, anyone who thinks about it for a few seconds, like, well, that's better than what we're doing right now. Um, you know, by, you know, an order of magnitude or two. So yeah, I'm excited about it. I, I've been talking to a couple people about, about joining myself and it's just like a, a, a time function. I think it's, I think it's inevitable that, uh, that I, I personally will be part of this. It's just, you know, a matter of, of when only, and honestly, like, I, like with no intention of winning, I want to experience it a lot. Um, and, and be able to hopefully having experienced it, be a much better evangelist for it. Cause like, that's, what's in the cards. I think it's just, it's, it's, it's an idea that needs to just be tested and iterated, uh, and, and used for good, um, you know, as much as, as we're able to, to, to get it to happen. Okay. Can I say something on that? I, I remember listening to one of your guys' podcasts a while ago, and you were talking about some decisions that had to be made within the uplift. Mm -hmm. And you were you had the you had users, and you're like, oh, we got I, I forget what the decisions were about. But I, I thought when I was listening, I'm like, oh, this would be a great application of an Eden process. Like, because Eden on EOS is just an application of Eden onto EOS, but you could have Eden on uplift, and you could get members of your community to make mm. decisions around where plots should be or where a monument should go or whatever the decisions are, but you could easily just have the process within the uplift. Yeah. Let's call that inevitable. And we'll figure out, figure something <laughs> out that, that, uh, um, yeah, I think leveraging our entire community into that on something they actually really care about would be really fun, man. Chris, you should like win. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Hey, oh, Corey, Corey, do you want it? Sorry, I was just going to say, speaking on that, we've got a trial election coming up on uh, July 17th. It's a Saturday. Um, and it's open to anybody, right? You don't have to be a member to experience the process like you're saying. And if you're oh, really? not putting yourself forward for election, it's an hour, you know? And the part about this that I was struck by when we ran the first election and I did not anticipate, people enjoyed this, man. It was like a sporting event. Yeah, they yeah. felt like they were at like you know a, a boxing fight or something, you know, and they had their guy in there, and they're like, "We got him in the first round, got to kick Chris Barnes' ass." Like, there's no doubt he's going to the finals. 
Jeez, you know, who's going to win? Yeah. You know, and there was like, I, just, I mean, it was fun. It really was political fun. political junkies, right? And it's yeah. like, if we could actually mm-hmm. leverage that attention and energy into something that isn't toxic and gross, yeah. I mean, right. that'd be pretty good. Yeah, it's it was really great because, I mean, it's a mix of people already. You know, it's not like we're all just you know like big best friends who are like all believe the same things i mean it's a right. wacky crew you got josh and brandon and chris like, i don't know what the heck those guys are up to but like we can come together around this yeah. you know um yeah. and it's it's just that was the magic so far i want to see if it happens again you know was it the first time like, it the, will, that's the it process <laughs> wow right like yeah it that was could get exciting fun. yeah it was so much different than uh, discussing politics, which usually mm-hmm. when my friends uh, bring that topic up, I say oh. I'm not intelligent yeah. enough to discuss that. Uh, I hate politics. Israel's mm-hmm. politics is in bad shape. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, the same as in the U.S. or worse, but uh, we had two years oh, yeah. of indecision and uh, no government for two years. We had just yeah. a temporary government. and. Uh, we had four elections in two years, so every six months in average, on average, and uh, they they couldn't get to a, a decision. And um, the the trial election was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. I I met people I didn't know, and uh, we were discussing, and and we had lots of similar uh, goals for and hopes for EOS, and. Uh, different ideas on how to improve the the token value and uh, the whole ecosystem and it was really engaging and i was surprised that i got elected and then i had to stay for more than the first hour (laughs) and it was a very long process but i really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun i'm looking forward to the next one i mean as corey said about the process like and 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 um as i think chris said as well like that's kind of what John told me on from from Boyd. He's just like, yeah, it's just an hour, right? Like you just go in there and it's an hour, and you don't even have to declare your intent to run. Mm-hmm. Um, and and like for me, what kind of seems the most exciting is just getting thrown into a random room of people that I don't know who they're going to be. Like like Amy right. said, and like these are probably potentially people like you know some of you I know I, I you know we've been in rooms together before, but some of you I I don't right. And and so like just this random room of people, you might not even know what these people are doing, as Dom said, Dominic said, right? Like like you don't you don't know. You, I think that guy over there, you know, has a podcast, and that guy over there, you know, they're doing something with DeFi that you know you, you, you never might not know. So um, so, but really, the only one on this panel that really matters today is uh, I think. I think I got this right. It is Chris. Um, so so happy Canada Day, Chris. Um, you you know, <laughs> by the way, um, I Corey, do you want to flag? Do... Where's my flag? Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Patriotic. Um, but do you want to do some gratitudes? And I, I thought I don't yeah, really know what this. I don't really know what this question means actually. So maybe one of you guys, while while we do that, can can while Corey pulls that up, we, we can tackle this. Yeah, how, how will these uh, consensus <laughs> differ from a fifty-one percent attack? <clears throat> I'm not sure if I even understand it, to be honest. <laughs> well, I mean, if they're are they talking about it, it's the not, ability of someone to take it over and game it? I mean, there, there, there's no vote like that. So I think if you were to think 51% attack, that would mean if you had 100 people and they all voted at once, would 51% of those people or 51 people vote right. a certain way and change things around? Yeah, it that, doesn't work that, like that. It doesn't work like that because you take those 100 people and first you break them into groups of five, six, seven, randomly. Eight, randomly and then you only vote there so you there's no even if you if you had a bunch of sock puppets who entered eden you still can't control who you're going to be grouped up with to then Mm -hmm. confirm guarantee you're moving on to the next round um and then beyond that the takeover piece like the bylaws and the rules of eden you can't so if someone so right now assume i won the first official election i didn't it was the mock but if i was official for satoshi i could propose bylaws um in fact, Dan's going to be that guy for the first year. But I could propose bylaws, but it would take another set of elections, another election to then make those Confirm. bylaws become actually ratified. So even if you did have takeover of one election, you'd have to win two in a row or have capture for two in a row to really enact <clears throat> and, and impose big changes to capture the network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting aspect, right? Like you can't just change what you want to change because you get voted in. But the, also, too, correct me if I'm wrong, but... I believe um, if there 
if the group of four, the original group of four, or any of the following groups of four don't come to consensus, then nobody moves forward, right? Like nobody can go through, right? So like you can you can kind of stall that out. So uh, yeah, I guess maybe uh, Chris answered that well. I think maybe that's what they meant. So. <clears throat> yeah, and it's important to note too. Not only you randomize, but you randomize like that moment that second you don't have any time to like scramble you know you don't find out an hour before where i can go around send Corey 20 bucks and you know yes, give wait. somebody else a, you know <laughs> a, a, a bribe and start making backroom deals like bam it's like right now okay all right Corey. you know and and, and immediately you know who's running and who isn't you pre-declare that as an individual um because one of the things we learned in the first election is we didn't want candidates to get clumped so again, testing the process. This selection, you pre, you know, determine or, or delegate, say, all right, I want to be a candidate or I just want to be a voter. And then we're going to randomize the candidates and average them out so that we have about the same amount in each room and then randomize the voters so that, you know, if out of 120 people want to run, we get two people in each room and then, you know, three voters um so that we don't get clumped because that would be terrible right you'd have five great candidates maybe in the same room and now they're just fist fighting it out and three other rooms have everybody looking at each other like i just came to vote like i just came for beer <laughs> you know like what's, i don't want to get elected and you know uh, you you lose some quality there so we're trying that out um as, as a little tweak you know to the process but yeah you only find out right then so i you know, I know humans find ways to game everything pretty much because it's just our super monkey nature, as Corey was pointing out. But, ouch. I, I hope not. Hope this is as sound as it sounds, if that makes any damn sense. I don't think well, and, does, and you iterate it, right? Like, that's why, like, everything we're doing with the uplift, we're basically letting everyone know, like, all of this is test phase. Mm -hmm. until, until we say it's not, and maybe we never will. <laughs> like, we're going to be testing things ad nauseum, right? We have the... Well, that uh, could be the solution right there. And I'm not right. sure it isn't in everything now because of how fast things move, right? Right. You don't know what it's going to look like. The second that you the second that you solidify something or distill it down to something that can no longer be changed, I mean that's a huge risk, right? Yeah. yeah. So just don't do it. And yeah. then, and then you know it's a, it's a it's a matter of messaging that out. Like no, this is an organic process. Like we're still evolving shockingly slowly some of us, but like you know right. we're we're right. trying to we're trying to do it. And, you know, like that, that process is the thing that we're doing that works really well. So, like, maybe we just leave that open yeah. and just, you know, promise ourselves, you know, we reserve the right to have a better idea at any moment because mm -hmm. we're going to eventually, right? It's only a matter of time. Yeah, Corey, I think that's a very good point. And uh, you, <clears throat> you can be at peace with yourself. Uh, and, and it's okay that you never solidify anything and you never declare that it's done. Think of Facebook or Google. Uh, Google has a very uh, simple user interface. It's just a white screen, and there's a text box where you can type a word or something and, and a button, and that's it. So what are all their uh, army of developers doing there? They, they keep on developing and improving and uh, finding new stuff to do. It's never over. It's never done. And that's OK. Heck yeah. All right, so who's up? By the way, for those of you, anyone who doesn't know, uh, this is the Uplifters Tower and the Uplift. Um, we come in here, and uh, every time that Jimmy and I do a show, we ask everybody who's on it what they're grateful for. Um, that's what all those monuments are. They all have everybody's gratitudes from all the shows that we've been mm. doing. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, Joshua, let's start with you. What are you grateful for? Yeah, I'm grateful. I don't know how to word it on the on the small brick here, <laughs> but I'm <laughs> grateful for for EOS to have a, a fresh start. All right. I know, right? Like after doing like one of these like little monuments, Twitter becomes easy. There's so many more characters in Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. There's something to be said for being concise, though. Amen to that. Uh, <laughs> all right, Brandon. I think today I'm going to go with I'm grateful for the wisdom of the people. There's a lot of not wisdom in the people, but I think this process teases out the wisdom, and that's what I'm grateful for. 
Imagine if we could have an NFT that was like labeled not wisdom of the people that you could upgrade to wisdom of the people. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta burn you gotta burn your your non wisdom. Right. You have to blend it with an Eden OS NFT, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> um all right, Ami. Uh I don't know. It's uh too much responsibility. I'm I'm grateful for the AC that's running in my room. And, uh, <laughs> That's real. And uh, meeting yeah. all you guys. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, Eden. And I'm grateful for uh, uh, more equal animals, which I'm translating to Hebrew. Nice. All right. Yes. I got some of that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember you saying that, right? Like, you've been you've been working on it for a while. You, uh, one of the things that you do in the space, other than, than development, is actually some translations. And you've been translating some some really important books. So that's really cool. Uh, thank you. Just just that. one. Just this book. <laughs> not, uh, not many books. <laughs> awesome. All right. Mr. Chris Barnes. Uh, I am grateful for PR, perseverance, and resiliency. <laughs> I'm going to misspell this for sure. <laughs> eh. Fanatically close enough. This, yeah. This is yeah, a right? Test. Yeah, I failed. Luckily, iteration is forever. still something we can do. Yeah, I can edit it. We've got uh it's uh okay. it's it's permanent until it's not. Uh right. it, it, so it's called it, it's called destroy and rewrite. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dominic. Uh I'm I'm grateful for people's willingness to try again. Uh, I, you know, I know there's been a lot of like, you know, resentment and just pain uh, that people have experienced with lost hopes and dreams and, and just frustration. And so, uh, you know, as pissed off and as beaten up as people can be sometimes, I'm always amazed by their willingness to just try again. You know, it's just great. That, uh, that is one of the best gratitudes that's up anywhere in the uplift, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Thank you. It's, I mean, it's huge, right? I mean, like mm. any anyone that's tried anything and failed, it's not super fun, mm -mm. but getting your ass back up and trying again is the only way that anyone gets good at anything at all ever. And I so, think it's humanity's superpower. I really, I, do. I think you're probably right. Well you said. No, it's just, it's, it's amazing. Thanks, guys. Uh, I got one. Oh yeah, sorry, Jimmy. That's all right. I've done a few of these today, um, and, and um, I haven't shouted out Canada yet. So um, I'm grateful for Canada, Canadians, and progress. Um, of course, you know, on the fourth, I'll be grateful for independence. But today, it's Canada Day. All right, fair enough. Or, right. or, per or perceived in independence, potentially. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Um, yeah, so, uh, I wanted to maybe touch on something that, that Brandon said, cause it came up in the comments in order to participate in these elections, you do have to have an EOS account and, and you do have to, um, you know, buy a token. So, so what does that look like, Brandon, <laughs> for people who are, are new to the space? Why do you have to have an EOS account? I mean, that should be obvious, by the way. But <laughs> why do you have to have an EOS account and why do you have to purchase a token? What's the point behind that? Am I supposed to address this? Um, I, I I don't know. Anyone can address it. But like you brought it up. So anyone you, else you want to jump in? Um, well, I think uh, you have to have an EOS account because uh, Eden on EOS is uh, about. Uh, improving the EOS mainnet and it's about the blockchain and it's about this token and you have to participate and you have to have a stake I mean real life stake you have to buy in and uh, prove that you're a member because it's going to benefit all the members and you can't be an outsider and affect the uh, EOS members without being one and also you have to, I think, donate some uh, tokens. And uh, if you get voted, you get to manage a, a certain uh, budget for your term. And by uh, donating some EOS, you're actually uh, uh, leveraging your donation. So 
the budget that you get is like a multiplier on the amount of money that you put in. It's not like you get free money to play with and just run off. You right. So the amount of people, the, the amount of people, I could be wrong, but the way that I understood it was the amount of people that participate directly correlates to the amount of money that the fund will produce for, for that. Is that correct? Well, uh, it's a combination, Jimmy. And I would add just quickly, you need an EOS account because you need the blockchain. I mean, this is an actual use case, right? Like you need to sign your transactions. Um, we're doing trial elections now, and so we're doing them manually, but Eden OS to clarify a few parts of this, so the terminology gets a little weird and, you know, uh, doing our best here with branding and, and comms, but um, Eden OS is like the software, right? That's truly the infrastructure. It's the thing that anybody's gonna be able to use in the future to try to use this Eden consensus process, right? For Uplift, for your poker club, for whatever. That's Eden OS, that's being built by Clarion team. And of course, I'm sure many people will contribute in time, open source. Then there's Eden on EOS, which is the first attempt to make one of these groups. And it just so happens that Dan Larimer's a little involved with EOS, you know, and the rest of us are. Um, so it's a good place to apply it. Um, and that's what we're doing with it. But so without an EOS account, you kind of don't qualify for the um, subjective aspects of this particular Eden group, right? Which right. is the, we're all about EOS value. That's our that's our thing thing common, and then you got to pay ten EOS because yeah, skin in the game combined with the identity aspects, all of these things kind of come together to hopefully create engagement. Right, and like it'd be like it, it would be like voting for the next American president as a non-American living in right. Penn, right. which I kind of feel like I should have the right to do because the world might be a better place if I got that vote. But let's just leave it there. <laughs> well, no, and that you're well extrapolating actually that because of America's imperialism and extra power, <laughs> to some degree, maybe everybody should U.S. dollar reserve currency. No, but mm -hmm. I hear you. Yeah, like, but 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 like in a global world, it, 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 I, I made a joke there. But in a global world, this kind of makes sense, right? Like like if you have this power of decentralization, and I think somebody mentioned it before, you can go all the way down to the local level, but you can mm -hmm. go to a ma macro level yep. about it as well, right? And you can plot, it's it's kind of, w once it gets operational, it, it's kind of could potentially be a plug and play, right? Like you can plug it into any business model, you can plug it yep. into any social network, you can plug it into, yep. it, it's not like, okay, EOS is gonna take over the world because of Eden on EOS. It, it's more like a process that, that can be, you know, utilized. Um, as a form of governance to allow people a voice and to enable, you know, a more hierarchical approach to uh, what gets done and what gets said. Um, I, again, I might be misinterpreting what I'm reading and what I'm hearing, but I think that's the way that I kind of personally understand it as. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, um, you know, it, 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 if people think of it as a, um, you know, it's going to be an app, you know, that you can add to anything that, that has certain function and it's to help you reach consensus in a group. And you can add your own elements, that's where bylaws come in, right? That's where the idiosyncratic aspects can be put together to, to fit your needs. But we, we see eventually, you know, Eden electing representatives to kind of interact as ambassadors with other Eden groups. And so you could almost see like if every country in the world used it, they'd elect their sort of leadership but then they'd probably have an election for an ambassador too, be like, or a crew might be there, two or three people that would go to the Eden of the world. And then the Eden of the world would do the political playoffs and elect Supreme Leader Corey, <laughs> you know? Um, no, but it, but, and it sounds awful, right? Like, holy crap. But imagine the level of consensus reached by the time you get there. This has gone through groups of 10, yeah. over 7 billion people, theoretically. I yeah. think you'd get a pretty amazing person. Add in the randomization aspect, and I mean, but I, I don't know if you guys have heard. I think it's uh, Fix the Vote on Radio Lab. They talk about ranked choice voting, which which I think is like a, a, a sort of a, a hack that you can duct tape to democracy as we understand it now. That kind of moves in this direction. Mm. Uh, but they also talk about testing out this thing where they grabbed, I think it was like thirty random people in in Ireland or something. And basically just ask them to come to, to uh, a consensus around this like city ordinance thing or whatever. It was infinitely more efficient. They got way better results. And it was just random people. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it's I feel like I feel like you know, you know, like I feel like this this mechanism 
is taking that power and like just ramping it up to a gazillion. Um, you know, like it, it's got that that ability. To, okay, like you know, we're just gonna all get in a room. And I, like I've heard so many people joke about this, and it's so true. Like, put any two people in a room, like we could probably figure something out that's not gonna be dickish, and we'll like it might not be perfect, but it's gonna be it's gonna be all right. Or you know, you have this giant financial interest boggled you know thing that has grown up from when you know the entire system of representative democracy is all designed on how long it takes to travel to Washington on a fucking horse. Right, like that. You know, we're not there anymore. Right, we no. could probably do better. Yeah. One one of the really cool things to me about Eden is it, although it's being built on, um, on EOS and it you and it leverages blockchain technology, um, it doesn't really need the blockchain to work. Yeah, um, that's important, Brandon. Yeah, talk about that. That's a big deal. Yeah, it doesn't really need any technology to work. I mean, as Dan illustrates in his book, you can, you can do this in a school gym with a deck of playing cards. Um, so what I see, one of the other amazing potentials of Eden on EOS being as the first instance of Eden is just kind of like a way to get this process um, in people's minds as something that they could do wherever they are in, in whatever configuration and whatever community, if we can just teach people this consensus process, um, then yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if all the electricity goes out tomorrow, like if we're able to coordinate um, effectively in groups using a really smart method like this that doesn't fall prey to all these various forms of corruption and capture that we've you know, been living with for so long now. Um, that's major game changer right there. So just the knowledge of this process um, being out there, I think, will be be huge. Yeah, the Amish can reach consensus with this. As an example, I'm not playing on them. I happen to live near Amish communities. They're amazing. But like, really, like to they don't use tech, but all they'd have to do is gather and and find a method of randomization, you know, random numbers, you know, playing cards as brandon said whatever stick draw straws you know well and you know like <laughs> i couldn't fall asleep last night and i was thinking about you know we're dealing with a situation in minneapolis where we have like i'm, I'm not in minneapolis but i'm moving back there and um that's where i'm from and as you, you've all probably been following the news like minneapolis is at the center of just so much madness right now with the uh, george floyd um murder and all this stuff so um there's been this huge call to defund the police and that led you know to like its own forms of chaos emerging and then um but there's really an appetite in minneapolis now for kind of a community uh led governance essentially and and i got to thinking like what would it actually take to to um you know, because you can try to like tweak the the you know, like the, the things here and there, but you know, you deal with the machinery of the city. It's just you end up in this total quagmire of rules and regulations, and like there's almost too many checks and balances to change now. I mean, uh, but anyway, the the reason I'm talking right now is just because <laughs> you you don't need to take over city government to change city government. Um, a process like this allows you you could just crowdfund um you could use the eden process to to run a candidate um to select and run a candidate like the people could just get together you could use you could get like 30 people together generate enough um, interest in 30 people to get to go out and then reach uh, 300 people to then go out and reach 3,000 people and then before you know it you've you've got i mean what does it take like yeah, you know, for a mayoral campaign in Minneapolis, it, it's like a hundred and fifty thousand dollar campaign budget. Like, how how many people do you need to coordinate to get a hundred and fifty thousand dollar campaign budget? And everyone's going to be completely invested in the process by that point. Um, you could elect. I'm, I'm, I, I guarantee you, you could elect um, a city representative with this process without even going through traditional means. And it would be way cheaper to, if the city just adopted this process rather than making people use the process to 
play the kind of corrupt game that exists now by you know buying advertising and doing jumping through all these hoops but if if we can do it within this really inefficient way by like coming at it from the outside then that should prove that having it um, as the base layer would be way more efficient and effective you know so I think we're gonna see some interesting experiments in this uh, next several years that may prove what this uh, process is capable of. Right, like all you really need is a bunch of random people to meet on the street and talk about the weather in some back room for everyone to get a kick out of it and a laugh. Um, and 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 you know, move to the next level of that like community is power, community building. I kind of thought that would get a laugh because we're here talking about the weather in the back room of this podcast, but nobody seemed to get that. Um, <laughs> we're too used to uh, meta circular uh, thinking. So AC's no about... joke, Jimmy. This is not. This is life. This is life. Oh my god! I couldn't stop sweating for three hours yesterday after I came inside. My body was so warm just oh, gross ac wow. for the people oh right <laughs> but like i think like i think you have a really good point um brandon like like that's you know we have the potential to build this i mean when we look at like what we support like i guess you know absence sometimes can be stronger than than anything that we might support right and and if we can abstain from the processes that be and, and move forward with funding mechanisms that can put things in place for communities on the ground in real time, then that can potentially change, um, you know, governments, right? Like, what what if your what if your street was 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 cleaned uh, by the elderly people who live on it instead of like by the um, government who you pay your taxes to? And what if we like multiply that by hundred x? Because this happens in a lot of places in Asia, right? Like, the the government taxes don't don't clean the streets, right? Like it's mm -hmm. the old people who come in and do it. And then you have these young people who aren't engaged in the community. Um, you know, I, I know you've seen that Brandon, like in, in your travels and stuff like that, right? So what happens when we involve like communities in, the, in this macro level? And, and as, as Chris was saying before, right? What happens when we have this process whereby now we have this funding mechanism, mechanism um, which like EOS was, was you know, thrown under the bus multiple times over the past few years because they're not doing anything with these funds, right? And and so like that's kind of old news now that we have this ability to actually throw funds behind uh, you know projects like Power, power Up, um, ES Power Up, which is you know what what Chris uh, went for uh, in the last election. So I'm kind of curious because I think Dom Dominic, you said that the the new elections are coming up on on July seventeenth. Uh, is that correct? So I'm kind of curious if any of you guys want to share. Now that you're on the panel, I, I'm assuming that you're all going to um, be uh, in those rooms of four. Um, what are you guys running for? I, I want to kind of give you the floor and 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 find out. Joshua, do you, do you have something in mind? Or are you just going to be a, a passive observer? Do you have something that you want to throw out like your support in the public channel for? Um, rally for the votes before the randomization of rooms so that you know uh, you know who 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 you already have support for and and who you need to send a last minute memo to with twenty dollars to pay them off. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, in this upcoming election, I don't know if I'm if I'm going to be a, a candidate or or not. Uh, maybe it depends on who I end up in the in the room with. Um, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around. I've been doing a deep dive and really immersing myself as much as I can in the EOS uh, community or ecosystem. Like speaking about the main net to really understand where the bottlenecks are and what the order of priorities might be. And um, I, I think there is something to be said as far as I've mentioned this before, like pre-election process leading up to the elections. I think a lot of the legwork and the consensus building is really done or it, it can be done going up to the election itself um, because you don't have a lot of time in these rooms. And uh, it originally it was going to be 10 people in each room. And now it's uh, going to be smaller numbers, which I think was a good idea. Well, you've only got, you know, a certain a very small amount of time to, to kind of uh, come together on something. So you sort of need to have your mind made up already, which is what Chris did going into the last election. Um, and I'm I, with what Corey uh, or no, it was what Ami said, uh, just participating in the election itself, like going back to what I said about being inducted, like there's a magic to it. There's you, you have to see it demonstrated and experience it to really catch the vision of of how cool it is and and what's going to be happening with this 
Um, there's there's a lot of conversation going on in the in the Telegram groups about you know uh, things that that can be done, but there's some really obvious priorities like uh, we need to lure some of the developers out into the mix. Uh, and uh, if, if you were to get funded and you didn't already have a team put together uh, because there's funding at different levels and, and I guess there will be down the road too, um, where are you going to go to put together a team to build the thing that you promised you were going to build? You know, it should be really easy uh, to aggregate that. Yeah, I think, uh, and also to just for, if, like Josh, it's a good, a good point, right? Like you may not, look to seek funding but ideally hopefully like in the eos community forums there'll be some more suggestions or more projects that people were just looking for representatives so even though you may not have uh, a particular idea you still mm -hmm. might see someone else's and then yep. just on their behalf you just you can act because, as a champion yeah because you, you're you're especially because you're becoming more known in the community you are being vocal you've got great ideas and so that will carry with like there is a reputational piece to this so it gives you an opportunity to sort of leverage and anyone who's participating to leverage the reputation they're building um and if you build a reputation of being a jerk then you know have fun leveraging that but what you're doing right you're leveraging a reputation of being a nice guy who's looking to collaborate and and build consensus and looking for ideas so um you know look I, there's, I think there'll be, hopefully, I'm going to put up some more posts, but hopefully, you know, there'll be at least a, a source of some suggestions of people who are looking again for funding and, you know, gravitating around an idea. And a lot of people who aren't really running for themselves can at least still run for someone else and do well. Yeah, Chris, I think you touched on something important is that um, we're going to see different kinds of candidates evolve. There's going to be people that are, say, good managers who will just take up causes that they think um, need, you know, support and become champions because, right, this is one of the issues we run into often is that human beings specialize uh, typically. And it's been uh, another huge reason why we've been as successful as we have been as a species in many ways in terms of definitely creating things and technology. Um, you know, if everybody tries to do it all, uh, we don't get very far. Um, but specialization can have its downsides in that, you know, if you're a great uh, builder, you may not be a great manager or, you know, uh, operations person or, or coordinator or, frankly, could be just really um, introverted and shy, right? And being on camera and putting yourself forward is like you'd rather be punched in the face. So, you know, I think we will see. It, it's not the end of politics, right? I mean, that's not what Eden is. It's it's hopefully just an iteration, an evolution of politics that's pulling out some of the severe downsides of our existing systems, you know, or, or fixing them at least. Uh, I've got to jump off here in a moment. I think Brandon does too. Um, but I do, do want to say um, it's a little bit off the subject matter, but there for anybody in the audience, there is something to what you said, Jimmy, about like a, a DAC or a DAO on steroids component to this. And the software Eden OS is not just supporting the consensus process. It's also supporting like the treasury, the accounting. Um, and so the software is mm -hmm. going to be incredibly useful and really probably make it a lot easier for people to set up DAC or DAO type of systems, you know, even for like your housing association or, you know, there's so many different applications yeah. for it. Um, and so that's, that's another thing to just kind of pay attention to. Like we're not just literally coming to consensus that's not the only thing that's happening here there's there's even process being built uh to properly manage the money and, and solve those kind of problems yeah community management tools for sure um and those will expand and then the censorship resistance right which is really the the, the next layer that we're going to need here is that we can't be reliant on other technology or certainly centralized technologies like you know the live stream software we're using right now or the zoom that we've been using for the elections right we don't we know i mean like i do not agree with say a lot of president trump's tweets for example but the fact that an american president was pulled from a social media platform i mean i don't care who you are if you didn't see that as a direct violation of free speech it, i don't think that's very american right or just human screw american i'm not a huge nationalist but you know just human freedom of speech man you can't 
just because you don't like what the other side's saying, you can't censor that shit. You know, like, I mean, outside of just flat out calling for, you know, the mass murder of the entire world. Come on. You know how people are not pissed about that. Which is so basically a just, official just, U.S. government policy anyway. Um, hey, guys, we got to go. But um, yeah. uh, on that note, you guys have fun with this one. Um, <laughs> long, long <laughs> I gotta, I gotta run. Run. We got we got our we got our dev meeting. I will say this. Yeah, you break you break the terms of service and the uplift. I'll fucking kick you off myself. I don't give a shit. <laughs> As you should. But well, yeah, Twitter did the same thing. He broke the terms of service of Twitter like a dozen times. See ya. Right? <laughs> Again, I don't care who you are. I would have done it at the first time and actually like prosecuted those rules fairly, which Twitter never did. So anyway, bye. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so um, but yeah, here's the thing, right? Um, because I haven't said that yet, and Sean always busts my shops. We're gonna do this. Um, we're we're gonna do this uh, on a on a monthly basis. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do these even roundtables. Um, cool. Because I, I, I think a lot of us have to go. Uh, you know, Chris has been here once or twice before. Amy, uh, Dom, Dominic, um, and Joshua it was your first time, so that's great. Um, but we really wanna like on the on the crypto writer these crypto writer roundtable episodes with me and Corey. We want we really wanna plug into this process. And um, you know, Corey has been in the podcasting game for a long time and he c covered uh all of the stuff that you're talking about with the trump election um mm. and, you know on his small podcast uh, diligently um and and you know kind of after that that whole thing was over uh we started doing our daily shows on, on the on the on, on our channel right um mm. the crypto base shows so um we're we but you know over here we we really want to have this mix of uh um People and I think you know two times a month probably what what the roundtables will be. Uh, one will be Eden focused and the other one will be actually block producer focused um, okay. or ESIO block producer focused. So um, you know I'm I'm hoping to mix and match you guys right. Like I'm hoping to get you guys on with different people with different community members. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll definitely um, you know if you guys have something to say, uh, obviously like hit me up. Uh, in, in, in the DMs um, and, and tag me in an official channel because my DM management sucks, honestly, seriously. Like I, I, I dropped the ball like five times this week, mm -hmm. and, like scheduled two episodes overlapping times where like people are just like, screw it, I'm gonna walk my dog because Jimmy's not even here. Um, and he's on it, not only he's not even here, he's on like on a stream with somebody else and that's not even my project. So. Um, <laughs> because I miss DMs all the time, but DM me, like I would love to have all of you back, obviously, again. Uh, the one thing I do want to ask, because I think I got this right, but uh, Morton MD, um, who, who's who's almost as crazy as me, because like he's been on all three of my previous streams, and he'll probably be on the next one that we do in like fifteen minutes uh, with Sean, because we're going to the ed edge of obscurity and back again. Um, so come on, come check that out. But what it, what what is the vote going to be uh, in July? I believe uh, the vote is for the dethronement of of Chris. Do I have that right? Well, yeah, it's just it's another trial. Um, so, you know, Chris wasn't officially elected to any position, but he was given a budget um, and and has put, you know, that forth. And so, again, if he chooses to run in this election, which I assume he probably will, maybe not, I don't know. Um, he has that track record now. He can say, well, so I ran on. This is what happened since that election. You know, and this is what I want to do next. Um, but yes, every election, everybody's up for election. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. That's that that needs as to be as silly as that sounds, but yeah, you know, like here. Uh there's there's no incumbency yeah. like that. Although I, I know that there's the possibility to call a special purpose election too, right? Uh as as a community. You could say, Well, we don't want to reelect our reps and budgets, but we want to just talk about Jimmy D's podcast. Like Aiden shouldn't go on the podcast. We want to like do you know a stupid example but you know there could be something special purpose um like recently it came up around a specific issue you know should we be supporting or putting some funding or toward something very specific and you could potentially call an election around that and then the last four people would kind of make that decision 
Yeah, so Martin, you have it a little bit wrong. Dominic, um, I mean, if you guys all want to ghost me, that's cool. But just give me notice because I'm going to book somebody for this. And I'm going to get fired. And I really fuck no, I'm good. I'm, I'm coming up. <laughs> no, I like being here. You can, you can sign me up. Even though I won't be the, uh, you know, the Satoshi after July 17th. Cause my yeah, he's going to lose a little shine slow. here soon. Yeah, it's, it, it's actually nice to have you on the cast again. I, it, I, I, you know, we, we used to talk back, at, back, at, back in the old warbly days. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, so I just want to address this one final comment before we go. Um, no, Larmer is not the be all and end all of, 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 of Eden in the day. And, and I, I don't know him personally. Uh, I've had, you know, a few interactions with him here and there. Um, when shit hit the fan and he left block one and everyone came out and said, um, every bad thing that they said about him, uh, I wrote a little piece that I put um, across the space and uh basically my like my perspective on it was he left block one in a shitty way and that was the only thing that was done wrong in my opinion right because like basically he left block one by posting on <laughs> by posting on uh hive that he was mm -hmm. leaving block one and i'm like at least like at least posted on the on, a, on an eos social media platform because no people were worried about whether the account got hacked or whatnot all of this type of stuff right but sure. in the end i think joshua what he said like previously was right and i don't think that dan's position was wasted from the beginning at block one i think he did some really good things but I think like we've noticed this with our project as well. Um, all of people who are constantly coming in and complaining um, to us or, or any other project, I'm sure it was back in the day with Warbly and, and, and it's definitely, you know, that, that solutions, I've seen that as well. All the people come in and like they're complaining and they're like, we need a robot, you need to tell us, what are you gonna, like sometimes our hands are tied, right? Like sometimes our hands are tied by legal, sometimes our hands are tied by like, you know, um, like disclaimers that, that like that we signed that we're not allowed to say things right professional and I, courtesy right and and i think and i think in this sense like dan's hands got to the point where they were so tied that he couldn't do anything so what i said in that article actually was the scenario that made it work out was what came true right he was actually allowed to step away from block one you know release his book and bring that to a vision where people like Chris or people like Amy or people like Dominic or people like Joshua or, or John of Void have been able to like sit behind and look at it and say, this is what matters, right? This, this is where it comes from here. I think maybe in the future, things will be more apparent, right? I mean, Dominic or Chris, one of you, I can't remember, mentioned that like kind of the next kind of be all and end all um, of the, the not the mock elections, but of like Eden actually um, was Dan on block one. But I think Dan can easily be voted out. If somebody comes in, you know, in the election after that and they say, look, like Chris Barnes did a stand up job and that guppy mm -hmm. that we hired in after him, he really sucked. So let's just put him in front of the whole world. And like you could potentially, you know, Chris be, um, you know, be, be shouted in as, as not the Satoshi of, of, <laughs> of the mock elections, but like, you know, anyone I think in, in the scheme could, has that chance, has that potential to, to, to beat out Dan, right? Like, and, yeah. and, and, and I, Dan's, Dan's designing it to, so he can't, so the, the final, there, there's this thing called sortition, which basically means to randomly pick, uh, your, your leader. So what in the first official election, the, the actual peace treaty is being rewritten, which is like this base foundational document that we all agree to. But the, the final winner is not selected from that final group. They don't get to debate and pick who should be the Satoshi. Yeah, it's, it's, just ran random. it's randomized. So even if Dan makes it to that final group, he's it's a roll of dice if he gets to be the, the guy who is the, the Satoshi. Um, and, and even still, I'm not even, other than, I, I think to me, the more, more value is in that final board group that's where right. I think you get this, this, the power to, I, I don't think the Satoshi, and this is just an opinion, should have any really special privileges or powers, but, you know, especially because of the random piece. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, that, that's neither here nor there. They do, the Satoshi will get more money. The Satoshi is meant to get one third of the full prize pool. Then the board layer below, or maybe it's a quarter, then the board will get a quarter. The layer below the board gets a quarter split amongst all people and the layer below that. So depending on how many layers you do, it'll how be many rounds? Third, or, third or a quarter. But so yeah, the Satoshi gets more money, um, and but maybe no other additional 
responsibility, just a title and, and more money, and maybe that's it. And so it doesn't much matter. I think, I think uh, it's, it's a little out of balance uh, focusing on the, on the top of the pyramid because right. every layer in the pyramid gets elected and uh, gets a, a part of the budget. And I think, Dominic, that should also help alleviate the stress. And uh, we have to encourage people to put themselves up to be elected and mm -hmm. uh, don't get to a situation where there is a very small minority and you have to make sure that they're spread out in the groups because then they'll be automatically elected if they're the only one that's uh, putting themselves up to election in every small group. And that's not good either. I think uh, we need to tell people that if you get elected in the first tier, I was so excited, even if it was just a, a trial and uh, testing the software and the, the whole scheme. But uh, you get the support, and it's you're not. It's not like uh, ordinary politics where you have to divide people and and make them hate each other to to vote you as just a very small uh, majority, like fifty one percent. You have to bring people together and and get to a. a a realization that you are going to be a good representative of them. And it's not like you're in charge of them and you tell them what to do. You listen to them and you understand what they want to do. So you you are a representative and, and it goes in layers. And even if you get elected in the first uh, round, you can, on, on the second round, you can say, I have enough, I just want to vote. Right. I don't want to be elected for the higher tier mm -hmm. and the higher uh, uh, responsibility and the higher amount of money in my budget, I want to stop here. And you can do that on any layer. And that's well, you, important. You, and you brought up an interesting thing there, um, which my mind went to, and I guarantee that nobody else's did because I just draw <laughs> bizarre synapses that, you know, mm -hmm. don't really fix. But the, like you think of like pyramids, right? For some reason, when I think of pyramids, I think of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And th this is what I think of. And it's a, it's a triangle on a two dimensional piece of paper. This isn't this, right? This is an actual pyramid. It's yes. an actual like three, mm -hmm. like three dimensional object where you have, you know, a base layer of fours that graduate to the next level, that graduate yep. to the next level, that graduate yep. to the next level, that eventually become the apex of, of, of the election, you know, and, and who gets the, you know, the grand title on the apex, but that apex in itself as well is not a two dimensional point on a, on a piece of paper, right? Like it's a three dimensional map that, that has this, you know, it's, it's like a three dimensional game of chess or a three dimensional, like the snakes and ladders, right? It's, it's not a two ply, like one, fit all uh, solutions. So I think like you brought up this point, like it is an actual pyramid. Like when we talk about pyramids, when we talk about pyramid schemes, right? Like right, we, right. We, we're not actually talking about pyramids. We're talking about freaking triangles. This yeah, is not triangle. a freaking triangle. You're right. You're right. Right. It, it, it's a, it, it's an actual. Yeah. That's important. That's, that's definitely a pyramid, um, right? Where, where you have these fours that graduate in their little collective sp spaces, right? Yeah, it's, it's governmental. It, it it it's governmental and policy Tetris essentially. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, that's kind of what it is. I it totally destroyed uh, EOS now because everyone's just saying it's just fucking Tetris on the blockchain governance. But like seriously, like <laughs> it's building blocks that are put together that are like rotated, right? And 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 I think Dominic, you, you mentioned this before. You know, you you can end up in a room full of freaking all stars. Right, and, and it happened in the last election. You can end up in a room full of people. This is what my biggest fear is, because I like I'm so busy. I'm kind of chatting in the top comments about how I used to write, um, and I just don't have time for it anymore. But um, you, you know, you can check out some of my old blogs, some of my old tutorials on Tribe One, and I did some stuff back in the early days, uh, you know, on Crypto Writer before you know before the whole voice thing, and you know, wrote for some projects, um, you know, that my name's not necessarily attached to, not because it couldn't be, but because that was my job and and what, what's interesting about it is i totally lost my train of thought there what's interesting about it is if you look at like if you look at like like th this this powerhouse group of, of potential um people that could be in a room then you've got to decide which one you want to put forward even though they all have great ideas what my problem is in not wanting to join um, not wanting to join, but I'm probably going to be inducted uh, soon anyway, but not wanting to join it is like my biggest fear 
is being in a room full of like three other people who just want to be like, oh yeah, I'm not going to declare my intention to vote. And then I get freaking pushed through and I got to like find time in my life to like deal with this thing that's like really actually like quite important. You right? like, have that to. can't happen. No, no that, that can't, can't happen. happen. You actually. have to vote that's for yourself. <laughs> You yeah. have to vote for yourself. That's important for people to know. And so that's okay. why. Yeah, that, okay, fair enough. Please explain that. Yeah. I didn't know that. A, a no vote is an okay outcome. And I know that kind of goes against people's conventional thinking. What do you mean? What do you mean? We have to come up with something. We have to finish. We have to, you know, it's kind of that type A-ness that permeates modern culture. It's like, no. Um, and, and, and this speaks also to Ami's point of, um, I don't think you're going to get like recurrent candidates who suck essentially or become elites in a sense that even if they're the only person in the room putting themselves up does not mean they're going to get elected if that room is not pleased with what that person is putting out they're just going to say no nah, no one's going from here and that's a great and powerful vote in and of itself right it's saying i'm going to remove this player from the game because i don't think they're a good player uh, for to represent me and in, in, in our interests. Um, but yeah, you cannot be forced, right? This is so much uh, the number one thing. And you guys have followed Dan long enough to know that uh, he literally cares about coercion. He really, that like his number one thing is just pe people being coerced by power, you know, bullied, forced, you know, he, he, it's so much about taking agency and having the ability to do so, you know, that you are voluntarily participating. That's why Eden's not a just let everybody join thing, you know, because you get so much apathy typically in these groups. And, you know, there has to be a, a willingness on your part to start by conceding that you agree. That's why there's the peace treaty. I agree to the consensus mechanism. So I'm not going to get into some group and then get stuck with a process that I actually don't believe in you know, and don't want to participate in and right. And what do you get? You get apathy, uh, you get in fighting, you get, you know, and so what I think is ultimately going to be most powerful about Eden is that feeling of, you know, I, I chose to be here. I chose to do this. I chose these people. I, I, this is, I, I do have skin in the game here. I do feel powerful, not powerless. Right. Um, and that's, I think a lot of systems render people powerless. Uh, Dominic, uh, that, that was a, a very important point, which I uh, ignored and I didn't think about uh, the possibility of uh, just not voting and uh, improving the state of the, the global candidate pool. Uh, system. Yeah. yeah. By, by not uh, just uh, voting to anyone who's uh, just offering themselves and you see, you sense that he's a jerk. Right. And that's interesting. Another possibility I think that could happen and uh, maybe that's also interesting is that if you initially thought that you're not going to put yourself up to uh, as a candidate and you see that the group is about to vote for nobody, then maybe you will change your mind during the hour that's allotted to these uh, dynamics. And yeah, I think that, say I that I think that happened once in the last round. I think somebody really? said that they did that. Yeah, I um, didn't watch all of them. I I wanted. To, yeah, neither did I. It was so, so long. Yeah, I, I, I don't recall. I, I gotta I gotta bounce in too because I do the show. Yeah, with yeah. Sean, Sean, Sean uh, that's called uh, to the obscurity, uh, to the edge of obscurity, and back again in forty five minutes. Um, and trust me, it doesn't last forty five minutes. I think like our shortest episode was like two hours. It's just a thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like like I'm I'm sure he's not in the comments, so I'm sure he's not gonna overhear this. But I'm pretty excited because I burned a, a shit ton of fifty coins today. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna walk through like how to upgrade your uh, how to upgrade your your finnies. I, I have enough uh, iridium to, to get the BT say miner, so that'll be fun. We're gonna do that. We'll probably play around in the uplift. I don't know. My computer might blow up. You know, I, I like I bought my computer three years ago and I kind of chinsed out on it because I thought, hey, I'm just gonna like do some writing and stuff. And and now like apparently I play video games online for a living, which is really <laughs> weird because I don't even like video games. Um, it's been a long time, uh, Dominic. I don't know how long it's been. It's been a few years, but like it's interesting that we're in the same room again together. But I do, I do. Before I go, I want to give the floor to Chris because Chris had something to say um, about the voting process, and it's Canada Day, and uh, you know, if one day of the year 
we let the Canadians speak last. So you're up. <laughs> I don't even know what I was going to say about the voting process. Um, I, I, I think I could jog your memory. I, I, and I think maybe Dominic covered a, a lot of it. But I said my biggest fear, actually, was, was the fact that I was stuck in a room and I don't have time to, like, because sure. I, I, I don't like to throw, like, my hat in the ring if I'm not going to be fully committed. And, yeah. and oftentimes, I like, I'm the type of person that fully commits to too many things. So I look like my, like, I, I look like everything's, like, out in the water. And, like, you know, I, I'm so fully committed to all of these things that I'm not, already like you know um achieving fully because just the community and, and the things that we're building at uplift and then the dax yeah. that i'm sitting on with block base and and boyd and i'm like i've you know i have a one and a half year old which like fuck, i even if you don't do blockchain fully committing to a one and a half year old that's just insanity like don't 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 ever try it like adopt them when they're three that's or five or five. i don't know what what, what age <laughs> anyway. uh, four, four or five when they start i'm to sorry talk. don't feel bad about that i swear <laughs> dad's just we don't belong in the first like five years right. you're hard to try i changed all the diapers i did it all yeah. and i didn't i wasn't sexist about it but man they just don't like us they i mean, like uh, boobs yeah, they like yeah, moms yeah, you know yeah. it's primal it's just it's tough it's, this is more of an obscurity chat but i like that you're going there um but yeah like totally like like uh, it's it's funny because like you know she just wants to show me everything and she just wants to make mom turn on the tv um and mom's actually awesome the only reason she speaks is because mom anyway my yeah. fear do you have something to add to that chris yes uh, I do because I I think I I know last time I was on with you guys I had sort of misspoke on this idea where even if you didn't want to you could still get pushed through and and that was a miss a misspeak for sure you have to be able to you have to vote for yourself you have to want to move forward so when you show up and uh, you, you, so even once the official Eden starts and there's an election being called you can opt in or out of the election so there's an opportunity where you can basically um, say that you're not going to show up so you don't even have to be there at the election and still re retain your membership um, certainly we want people to and even if you're not going to move forward you're just there for that first round to vote so you can at least have your voice heard express some ideas and opinions and get you know which is way more than you have in a current uh, democratic system of voting. But yeah, if you don't have the time to move forward, there is zero pressure. You just, you, nope, I'm not voting for myself. Therefore, you're, you you can't go forward. If they can convince you, if you're a yes man, I'm, I'm with you on that. I have a hard time saying no to people as well. Um, and so maybe they'll convince you to want to move. Come on, Jimmy, just, just the next round. It won't be that much work. You're the best guy for the job. And maybe like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Then that's on you, but they can't they can't make you if you say no, no, I can't I'm just here to vote for somebody else Then that's the end of it first round you're done Yeah, well, that's good to know because I like I am a yes man, but I'm not yesing in no. like, <laughs> I, 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 Like you know, I'm I'm having to like yeah, I I'm you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna be it but, and, and then that's not saying that I don't believe in the project that I don't believe in no, the value of it. To do with that you're just being right. wise and saying what you can be yeah. of service to and what you can't um, well, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I and I kind of want to like just just to say this right like I do like I get what Corey was saying earlier about like wanting to experience it and what some of you other guys were saying and I do want to do this at some point but I want to do it when I can be like completely dedicated to it right like I want to I want to be in the position. It seems like Chris was maybe in that position. It seems like Joshua was maybe in that position. Maybe you as well, Dominic. Like I, I know, like you know, maybe after. Oh, Warley, I've been working on this full time for three months, right? Now, and so. so, like, like I, I want to be in that position yeah. as well. So. Well, you don't have to be though. I want that. That's for you, and that's yeah. personal. But I want to be clear to everybody else too. There's just layers, and it works. Um, just being a member and putting in. 10 EOS is its own vote, right? It's saying I vote for Eden as an org and you can be passive. You know, I, I at first was thinking, why would we allow people to do that? But I had a great convo with Dan and I know we have to end, but just he, he explained it to me in a way that makes a lot of sense, which is that it's a type of vote. If you think about it, everything you do is a vote. I mean, I learned this in poli sci, like in, in the US, you actually vote the most with your dollars. Because if you are supporting a corporation, it's whoever they support in the elections that's probably going to get elected. So think about that stuff and all, you know, right. but anyway, get involved. There's lots yeah. of layers. Lots and, of layers. And Jimmy, honestly, when I think what makes a lot of sense for you guys is, is think of a way when you're ready, when you have some sort of big decision process to come up in the uplift. So it's directly related to what you're working on. 
then don't worry about Eden on EOS. Just no, no, no. Le learn Use enough about the Eden process and bring the Eden process into the uplift. And that'll be, that, that I think is amazing. Like that's just showing yet another application. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people like myself, I would gladly jump in and try to help you set that yeah, up. Um, I would help you too. That, that's where you get to like utilize the process and just expand mm -hmm. awareness that way. And in a yeah, way that benefits you. And honestly, like you might have something there because like what we, the feet, we could just run the, one on a the, show the, too, to show people. Right. Right. Oh, Hey, we Holy could do shit. just like this, a room of five, four, four to six. We're saying now we think fucking we do hell. 50 I, minute I, show. Let's that's, do it. Holy shit. That's a great fucking, let's do a fucking induction online. We could do that too. Yeah. We could show it all. We could do an induction followed by an election round. A, a yeah. Let's, let's, round. let's do it on this show. I, I only have, I only have one thing I need to say. Like I, I want whoever is on this panel that wants to be there. Okay. But I also have to bring, we need three witnesses. So I'm, I'm going to recommend that we bring John in because he's a good friend of mine. And I, and, and of course. he was the one who keeps pushing me to get in. And he's like, you know, Chris, Chris, yeah. I'll he's have like, John he, induct he, you. We'll witness. He, Chris no, yeah, you, and I will witness, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you guys can all come on too, but like maybe me, you, um, and and Chris and Amy, if you want to join as well, but like yeah. John and Corey, let's do an induction on live next week during one of our show times because one of my biggest things is I'm having issues, um, you know, finding time because apparently yeah. I, I, I have an addiction to streaming. If anyone hasn't figured it out, so let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll book it. yeah, it's exciting. So, and before the 17th, let's do it on. Fuck it. Let's do it on Tech Talk on a Tuesday because government should be technical. Okay. And, and it's not required though, right? So anybody else who wants to participate in the 17th, you don't need to do the induction. You don't need to be official. Even even yeah. Jimmy, if, if you wanted to do an uplift focused Eden election, you don't need to be an Eden member. Like the process is in Dan's book. The book is open source. Right. Like, so no, but um, I like I'm gonna know. put this out there. Like like we've got room for 10 people. Uh Dom Dominic, if you're free at the same time, please come. Chris, if you're free at the same time, please come. I'll reach out to John. We'll see if we can get him on. Um that's that's all we need. We I can we, do it. We, 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 we need three people. Let's, I don't think we have a guest on Tuesday. Let's book this. Let's peg it next Tuesday. Um, maybe I'll even bring Sean on because I just think it would be fun. Because <laughs> I like oh, I that guy I won't be able to make it. do something fun. Like, answer. Maybe we all put Sorry? up five. Maybe we yeah. all put up five EOS and decide who gets it. You, 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 you don't get to, you, you, did you just say you can't make it, Chris? Next week, I'm a, I'm a camp counselor. I do a volunteer uh, at a, a kid's a youth camp. In my, we don't uh, need them. So I'm, I'm, need a, I'm, running, I'm running Tinker Town. I got the 3D printer going. So next week, I'm a write-off. But after that, I'm all, I'm all in for sure. It's, it's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. We'll, Let's figure it out. We'll, we'll bring in somebody. But I think you 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 killed it there, right? Because anyone can go and open and, and watch like what happened in the process meeting. Yep, Nobody yep, ever yep. sees what the induction is like. And freaking no, hell the inductions we're are doing all online right right but nobody ever goes and watches them because oh, like, sure, sure. at least when we do it live we'll have like five people watch you know? right right true. <laughs> it's, a, it's well, a start on that note uh one of my one of my favorite people um in the world in the real world that i ever met because like you know you guys can be virtual i can be plugged in the matrix i don't fucking know um but like one of my favorite people in, you the, are. in the real world yeah. um right right uh he he uh he studied the uh, israeli uh, martial arts i believe hmm. um and so ami uh, how, how how i how i like to uh, end the show is i always like to do a chop so i mean we're gonna give this to you uh do your best chop ever um and then one we'll I, I never tried krav maga except for right. one week in the uh, military and i was terrible at it <laughs> right but just throw <laughs> one down because like no, nobody will even know like a big israeli <laughs> guy throwing down a chop like that works yeah. give give us your best effort <laughs> And then what do you say? Go Eos, go Eden. 